I am sitting here with the Creality CR10 SE and as you may notice I have experienced the blob of death. Unfortunately my friends at Creality have been unable to send me a replacement hot end so I reached out to the kind people of Micro Swiss and asked them if they could send me a lifeline and shoot me over one of their CR10 SE hot ends to fix my CR10 SE and create this video. They kindly replied enthusiastically with a yes and sent me over one of their CR10 SE drop-in hot end replacements. It's right here in this tiny little box. We are going to go through removing the hot end with the blob of death and replacing the nozzle with this new Micro Swiss. To do this job, you are going to need heat. Conventional wisdom may be to heat this hot end up to 200 or so degrees and work that blob off. However, these new ceramic hot ends have very sensitive and fragile thermistors and heaters. And in the process of forming this giant blob of death, those wires may have been broken and shorted, which could create a hazard to your printer. In fact, my CR10 SE, when I attempted to heat the hot end in order to remove that blob, did indeed start smoking. Therefore, I will be replacing the entire hot end, which of course will come complete with new wiring. If you have a serious blob of death like this, you may need to consider doing that as well. To help me with this process, I do have this heat gun. I also have these state-of-the-art pliers that I picked up from Dollar Tree, and of course, one of my beloved pairs of clippers. However, my hope is that I can remove the hot end complete with the blob of death attached, throw it away, and forget it ever existed. Let's dive into it. This intimidating looking housing is simply a cover for your Sprite extruder and hot end. We will remove that now. You will be removing this screw right here and these two screws right here. Your printer will have come with Allen keys. Go ahead and find the one that fits and use that key to remove those screws. When removing the final screw, hold on to the cover because it will have a tendency to drop off. Some of my screws were pre-removed to relieve the stress on the cover and the components from my blob of death. With those three screws removed, this hot end will slide right off. Do be careful, there is one cable connected to the hot end circuit board. If you look on the other side, you will see that cable. Simply pinch it and pull it down. If you find the connector has glue on it, that is hot glue, which is applied to help keep the cables in place during shipping. Simply use something such as a pick like this and just gently pick it off. This will expose the somewhat scary looking hot end of your CR10 SE. However, there's nothing to be afraid of. You have a small circuit board right here. You have a Sprite SE extruder right here. And of course, the hot end is right here. That consists of the nozzle, the ceramic heater, and the thermistor. Go ahead and remove the heater and thermistor wire by pulling these two off. You will see that my fan is pretty embedded in that filament. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the fan as well. The fan has two screws. They are here and here. I've already removed mine. Go ahead and remove yours. The remaining two screws are here and here. Go ahead and remove them. Do be careful. Once this is removed, your hot end may fall out. That is unlikely, but possible. With all the screws removed, do take note, in my case, filament is still passing through the hot end, through the heat break, through the extruder, and coming out the top. We will need to depress this lever to open the extruder gears to free the movement of this filament. You see what happens? Grabbing hold of the hot end, depressing the lever, and working that hot end off, pulling that filament down through the extruder and out. There we have it. We have removed the entire hot end with the blob of death attached. Everybody's blob of death will vary slightly. In my case, the fan is stuck into the blob of death and I'm going to go ahead and try to remove it. The first thing you would do is just grab it and see if you can get it to break free 
without breaking the fan. No such luck. Unfortunately, it looks like the filament has worked its way into the fan. Unlike the other components of this hot end, the fan is plastic and I will need to treat it carefully as to not melt it during this process. I'm going to simply warm this filament to see if I can't get it to soften and release its grip on my fan. And there it is, a little softening of the filament and the fan came off. I was sure not to put the heat directly on the plastic. Instead, I put the heat on the PLA and it kind of transferred itself as it warmed throughout and softened even underneath where I applied the heat. Now, to replace this hot end, I do need to salvage this heat break. And you can see it's kind of buried. I am going to heat the crud out of this blob of death. You may be tempted to heat the heat sink, but as you can see, there's filament in mine, and I don't want to melt it inside there. You can see it was already getting soft in there. I even managed to remove it from the nozzle. You can tell because of that little lump right here. All right, I've decided to upgrade to Robo Grip because I needed a little more strength on this. The little heat gun wasn't cutting it, so I'm breaking out the big guns. This guy's a thousand degrees. blob of death. Believe it or not, looking at this hot end, it does look like the heater and thermistor actually held up and might be usable. But I'm going to go ahead and remove this and replace it with a new one. There's two little grub screw holes here and here. I'm just going to go ahead and work the PLA out of the openings so I can get those off. Once the heads are clear of filament, go ahead and remove the two screws. Here it is, the entire hot end and nozzle with the blob of death removed. You can see some remnants of it there. And this is the poor heat sink. It's really beat up, but ready to go back into service. Just double check inside this throat, make sure it's clean and there's no filament in there. Here is our Micro Swiss kit. Here we have two titanium mounting screws, and one copper thermal adapter. The first thing we will install is the copper thermal adapter, and that will go right here. The small hole will go inside. The big hole will face outward. Go ahead and place it into the hole. While pressing your thumb on the adapter, tighten the grub screw that you previously loosened to remove the original. Turn it until it's snug. Having this flush and tight is super important to avoid leaks. Next up is the heater core. You will place this over the copper adapter and secure it with these two titanium mounting screws. When it's done, it will look like this. And the heater core will move like this. Next up is the nozzle. The nozzle can indeed be installed cold. Go ahead and screw it in. Once you reach the thermal adapter, you will need a nozzle wrench or a similar. The official recommended torque is 15 foot-pounds or 1.7 newtons. I'm going with one point who knows Dollar Tree. 
The proper size socket is 7 mm You will notice with the nozzle installed, the movement stops. Everything is solid. You can now take the silicon boot, look for the notched side, and match it up with the wired side of the hot end, and simply press it into place. When installed correctly, it will cover the entire hot end with just the very tip of the nozzle showing. With everything complete, it's now time to put things back together. We will start with the fan. Plug your fan into the port that says fan one, and then slide the fan into the slot right here and attach it with two screws. You may need to attach both fan screws before the cable. Next up is the hot end. The hot end will install like this with the wires facing the main board. Go ahead and gently work it up the Bowden tube until it stops. Secure it with the two screws you removed. With all the screws installed, go ahead and attach your thermistor and heater. With everything connected, it should look like this. With all your components installed, the only thing left to do is put your cover back on. You will need to reattach the fan, that is fan number two. Plug it in to the remaining port labeled fan two. Then simply slide it over your fancy new hot end and replace the screws. And there you have it. We have rescued our Creality CR10 SE from the blob of death and replaced the hot end with the Micro Swiss leak proof, cold nozzle change, high flow, all metal design. 300C Flowtech hot end. Once you're done, go ahead and print yourself a test such as a doggy or a benchy to make sure everything's okay and off you go. And there it is, a beautiful doggo on the CR10 SE with the Micro Swiss Flowtech hot end. Hey.